Hey everybody, welcome back to another video on networking and threads. I recently did a video on threads and sockets and uh, trying to use threads in a multi-threaded server to try to improve performance a bit. If you missed that one, you may want to watch it first. I put a link in the description. So in that example, we were looking at a pretty simple approach. Basically, we have a server that accepts connections, clients give it a file name and the server reads the file and sends its contents back to the client. It's not particularly secure because it allows a malicious client to read just about any file on your machine. So you probably don't want to run this on a publicly available server. I wouldn't. But anyway, this server is pretty simple, but it has some issues and we're going to try to address those today. The main issue is that if we have a flood of thousands of connections come in, then our server is going to create a new thread for each of those connections and that's going to use a lot of memory and that could cause my server's performance to grind to a really sad slow crawl and that's definitely not what we want. So today I wanted to show you how we could upgrade this code in order to guarantee that we don't get into that specific situation. That is where we create an unbounded number of threads that end up degrading performance. And we're going to do that today by using a thread pool. Now, the idea with a thread pool is simple. Rather than creating a new thread for each connection that comes in, what we're gonna do is we're going to have a set of threads we create at the beginning and they're just gonna hang out. They're gonna be there available and as work comes in, we hand them to one of the threads. And if there's no threads available, then that work just waits until there is a thread available. And this allows us still to work on multiple things at once, but it ensures that we don't create an unbounded number of threads. We pick how many threads we have and we're gonna to stick to that number of threads. So in our code here, let's first define the number of threads we want to have in our thread pool. And I'm going to use 20, but that's completely arbitrary. The right number really depends on your hardware, how much memory you can afford to give this server and the workload that the server is going to see. Now, in your specific case, you probably want to experiment, play around with different numbers of threads and just see how it affects performance. But for my purposes, 20 is going to work just fine. And I'm going to declare an array of p thread underscore t's. This is going to be my pool of threads. And then at the start of our server, I'm going to create the threads. Now we go through and from zero to the size of the pool minus one, and I'm going to call pthread create for each of the threads. And I'm going to pass in the thread function and, and I need to learn how to spell. And then we need to define our thread function, which is going to be a bit different than what our threads did before. Before they just started, they handled a connection and then they died. And now we're going to do things a little differently because we actually want to reuse those threads. Okay, so now let's go down and look at where we handle those connections. This code down here isn't going to do what we want anymore. So we really need to replace it with code that is gonna now hand off each new connection to a new thread, assuming that there's a thread available, but how do we do that? Basically the short answer is we need to be able to put connection information somewhere where these threads can find them once they become available. And so for this, we're going to need a data structure. And fortunately, recently we've been talking about data structures, specifically linked lists, so that's what I'm going to use. Now, if this is uncharted territory for you, please go watch my linked list videos and come back. This will all make more sense. I'll be sure to link to those videos in the description. Now, in this example, I'm going to use a special type of linked list called a queue. And a queue is just like any other linked list, except that we always add nodes to one end and we always remove nodes from the other end. So it's a first in, first out type data structure. That's really the only thing that's different. And we call adding a new node, we call NQ, and removing a node from the end, we call DQ. So NQ adds a node to the queue, DQ removes the first node from the list, or from the queue, I should say. And in my implementation here, I'm going to have it return null if the queue is empty and there's nothing to pull off the queue. So that allows us to see, hey, we just checked the queue and there's nothing to do here. Okay, so back in my main program, now I'm going to include my queue header file. Oh, and I need to also include prototypes for NQ and DQ in my header file. Then back in my main server code, when we get a new connection, let's just take that connection like we did before, but now we're going to add it to the queue and there we'll stay until one of our threads comes along to grab it off. Okay, now let's define what those threads do. We never want these threads to die. So we're just gonna put them into an infinite loop. And you could also of course add some sort of termination condition here if you want. But for simplicity, I'm just going to leave it here with a infinite loop. When we control C, everything will just die. Okay, so then each time through the loop, we're going to call DQ, which we'll see if there is a node on the queue. And if there is, then P client will not be null. And so in that case, we have work to do, or I should say that thread has work to do. So now the thread can just call handle connection to handle the connection, just like we did before. And then when it's done, the thread is going to loop around again, check for more work on the queue, and if it finds it, it will keep handling those connections forever. So it's just gonna keep doing this forever, over and over again. Okay, so now let's see if it works. 
So it doesn't quite yet. I forgot to use quotes in my include. That just tells the compiler to search the current directory as well as the standard directories that it searches for header files. And I also forgot to compile my Q code. That's definitely a problem. So back into the make file, let's add a rule to build.o files and then a new one for building the server. And we need to add the dash C flag to the .o rule. Okay, so now it compiles all of the pieces for me and I can run my server. And once again, just like in the last video, we are waiting for connections. Now, if I run my script that fires off 50 clients at once, you're gonna notice that it works and we get comparable performance to the original version, which I explored in the last video. But I wanna point something out, we also got lucky. This server still has a fairly major bug in it. And if I run it again, you're gonna see it rear its ugly head. Okay, so that's not pretty, what happened here? The problem is simple. We have a shared data structure, our queue, and that queue isn't thread safe. So if two threads try to remove work from the same queue at the same time, or if one tries to dequeue while the main thread is calling NQ, the data structure can get in a bad state, leaving us with bad pointers or double freeze in here. For those of you that are new to the channel, this is called a race condition. And I've talked about those in my previous thread videos. And the fix is straightforward. All we need to do is protect those calls to NQ and DQ. And we're gonna do that with a mutex lock. Now we could do this in myq.c or I can also do it here in my main server code. In this example, I'm just going to do it in the main server code, but that's really an arbitrary decision that it really depends on your application and how this code is going to be used and modified in the future. And there's some personal preference in here too. So do what works best for your code. Okay, so now we're gonna do this by creating a mutex lock. I'm not gonna use my imagination. I'll just call it mutex. And then I can lock it before we call nq and unlock it afterwards to make sure that nobody else can mess with the queue while we're, while we're adding to it. And we need to do the same thing down here when we call DQ as well. So lock and then unlock. Okay, now we can make it and we can run it. And you notice that it is a tad slower than it was before because grabbing and releasing the lock takes a little bit of time. It's not a lot slower, but it is a little bit slower. And now I can run it for a long time and it no longer crashes. So this is definitely a step in the right direction. So now we have a multi-threaded server that uses a thread pool to make sure that we don't try to create millions and millions of threads when we have a lot of traffic coming in, which could cause performance to grind to a halt. But this server still has some issues. And we can see the biggest one when we run top and look at who's consuming what CPU resources right now. So if I run top, you notice that our server is consuming every last CPU cycle we have on this machine. Okay, so the reason is that if you remember, my worker threads in the thread pool are just busily checking. They're constantly checking to see if there's more work, even when there's nothing to do. So there's no traffic coming in, nothing whatsoever. My threads are still saying, hey, is there more work? Is there more work? Is there more work? Is there more work? And this is just going to burn CPU cycles over and over again until work comes in. And this really isn't helpful. Even though our server is functional, it's gonna cause my machine to run really hot. It's going to waste a lot of energy and it's not going to play well with other programs running on the same machine. And don't worry, we're gonna fix this and we're going to fix this with condition variables, but this is all the time I have for today for this video. I'm kind of in a rush today. So I'm gonna to have to put that in my next video, but I hope this discussion of thread pools and this example of how you can use them in at least one scenario, I hope this helps you out. And until the next video, I will see you later. <laughs>